Now, a little word about electron tra transportation. Okay, so let's just imagine that we have two molecules here. They're neutral, okay? They're neutral. They don't, they're not charged positively or negatively. They're not ions. They are neutral molecules, right? So we have A here, B here, and then it creates a molecule that's neutral as well, C there. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you understand there's no extra electrons anywhere here. Okay, so those molecules are happy by themselves. However, they can react with one another with the help of an enzyme, right? So let's, all, let's never forget that, that there's an enzyme here, then this enzyme plays a role in this reaction here. So, in order to create a covalent bond between A and B, because we want to unite them together, so let's imagine that we have something like this, right? This is what A looks like, and this is what B looks like, right? So we know that those two can be united with one another. And then C would look like something like that, right? So it's basically the, 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 the action of those two molecules now created. And in order to link those two together, right? It's not, remember, it's not like this. Those two molecules are now glued together. We will remove this just to, 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 to show that there is an actual link that is now being created between the two of them, okay? So, in order to do this, we will need electrons because the covalent bond is a sharing of one or more electrons between two partners, okay? So, where is the electron coming from? Well, it's not coming from A because A is neutral, it has everything it needs, and B is neutral, it has everything it needs. So, an electron needs to come from somewhere. Well, remember that when we're thinking about biological reactions, so basically biochemical reaction, um, we're talking about the, an, a, an exchange of electron, but we need electron transporters for that. We need electron shuttles, right? We need something that is able to grab an electron right here and pass it right there, like a, like a chain gang, right? So you go from one to the other and then you, you a chain um, uh, tra transporting via a chain, right? So you go from here to here to here to here. You bring your electrons over and over, like from place spot A to B to C, right? So we need some kind of a container, some kind of a box in which we, uh, we move this, uh, these electrons, okay? So in our case here, there are um, many molecules that can do this uh, in biochemistry, there's many of them. I'm not going to name all of them, but I'm, I'm going to name one, and we'll see that when we look at, um, when we look at, uh, at the citric, citric acid cycle, there's another one that's important as well. But let's just start with the simplest one. So NADH. So NAD, NAD is able to NADH is able to, to, it has an extra electron, and it is able to give this electron here so that C will be created. And in order to do this, it will um, take the electron from NADH here, which will give us NAD+, and the electron will now be used for the creation of molecule C. Okay? So we see that the electron here, it's not like I added an electron that comes out of nowhere just like that, right? There's an electron just happening to travel in the, in the area. It doesn't work like that. So the enzyme here will actually use this molecule here. It will use it and give the electron that this molecule NADH has to this reaction in order to create a covalent bond. All right? Why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this because we will see that in the citric acid cycle, there's a lot of, uh, of, of these molecules being created, and they're very important because they all contain the high energy electrons that we need to create ATP in the end. Now, let's imagine that this is a reversible reaction. So the reaction can go in this direction here, but also there's another enzyme, let's say enzyme number two, and I, I, 
did you see I didn't say enzyme number one? Because enzyme number one is able to push this reaction, but not the reverse. So in order to go the other way, we need another kind of enzyme for that. Okay? So let's imagine that we want to go in, re in the reverse. So we have C, and we want to convert C into its two components, A and B, right? So if we break this in the middle, we have an extra electron that was given right here. So what, we do, what do we do with this electron? Well, the enzyme here will now be taking NAD plus and convert it into NADH. Okay? This molecule here is the one that has the electron. Okay? It's the one that has the electron. Okay? Um, I told you that in citric acid cycle there's another um, electron carrier that we can use and I will show this to you right now. So it could be another one. So there's one that's called FADDH2 and it would be converted into FADH. Okay, so the electron travels with the hydrogens and in reverse if we use the same system we could have FADH and then we convert this into FADH2. So my goal here is not to confuse you with NADH, uh, NAD, FADH2, FADH and all that. That's not my goal. What I want to show though is that these molecules here have the capacity to transport and in some cases store electrons. They can store electrons and give it later, right? So that's what the goal of this presentation was. So please keep that in mind as we, as we navigate next into the citric acid cycle.